Hello and welcome to our game of Dungeons and Dragons. This campaign is going to be called Renaissance of the Antiquities. And it is being played in a custom-built world of mine called Endrial. Uh, and to give you, the listener or viewer, a primer to what's called the Om and Endrial. Om, A-U-M, these three sounds, without any extra aid of the tongue, are the basis of all language followed before and after with silence, all speech, all concepts, and all language springs forth, forth from the utterance of these sounds in finer and finer complexities. For this reason, magic in Endrial is often referred to as Om by its inhabitants. Om is the basis of all life at Endrial, for it is a place that we, the players and dungeon masters, inhabit with our minds thereby with our concepts, our languages, and our storytelling. Through our magic of our words that we speak, we make them flow and paint terrifying landscapes in our minds. We puppet heroes and villains carrying reflections of ourselves into battle to conquer the fears in our minds and overcome the challenges that we can only dream of. Through this medium, we as players are able to explore ourselves and our friends within the safe confines of a fantastical adventure. So delve into the world with us of Endriel. Find the complexity of the Om. Cast miracles and wishes. Find peace, success, and growth. For all magic in Endriel is linked to pattern. The patterns of life, of language, and of form. Playing in this campaign, we have myself, Navar, the Dungeon Master. We have our player, Mark, player Miguel, and our players, Tim. Together, the three of them will be exploring the landscape of the world around them, finding their connection to it and solving the problems that plague the world. To give a brief history of this world, the inhabitants and historians of Endriel have chronicled information split into four main eras. The first is the vibrations of the realm called the Concordance of the Om, where gods ruled and dragons rampaged. Nature grew and these powers created lesser beings that heard the Om, during the next era, the Augultation to the Om, where they rose to incredible, incredible power, reshaping the realm around them. When that power grew too much for the balance of these realms, it shattered, and Endriel and the Om became dangerously untrusted in the current era today, the Antithope of the Om. A couple of things are worth noting about the world as we move into it. First is its currencies. While gold, silver, copper, and other forms of normal currency do exist, they are far from the mainstay of the inhabitants of this continent. There are particular areas that they just largely re reject these ancient forms of currency. What does dominate is a material known as Astron. It takes the form of a hexagonal chip, roughly the size of a traditional gold coin, but slightly thicker. These semi-transparent colored chips have different values associated with them, ranking from colors from red, orange, and blue, to violet being the most prized. <clears throat> Additionally, when one looks in the sky of the world of Endriel, they find themselves warmed by the light of multiple spheres. And the larger of the two is called Zran, and its deep red hues cast their light warmly over the lands. Aeus rises and falls in the sky as well, piercing the heavens with its bright blue light. The pair of stars always travel together, dancing around each other in the sky throughout the year. 
The suns rise in the east, and they set in the west. Lastly, Enderil's sky has one moon, which people call the Verdant Rift. <clears throat> this moon is visible only during the days between spring and fall, during a time what's called the Mael during times which are called the Maelstrom. Each day, the Verdant Rift goes through a lunar cycle, from the bottom to the top as the suns move across the sky. This moon slowly transitions across the sky from north to south on the horizon over the course of that time span between spring and fall before it disappears for the other half of the year until the next spring maelstrom. And with this, we'll move into our adventure. And shift here. Sorry, I have to do the audacity thing. <laughs> Many technical stuff to be done. Yeah, this is this. Yeah. Okie dokes. And here I can start session. I suppose I could have just kept it going and you could have cut it, but oh well. <clears throat> so while I do that on the side, um, the three of you have had your growths in the world and you all know where you've been and where you, how you have come to be where you are. Our story is going to pick up with the group of you having traveled with a caravan uh, led by the, a man named Drix Rudd. Drix, for the most part, is a jolly man, and each of you may have your own reasons for joining this caravan, but you all left town out of a little town called Cephals merely seven days ago. With you, a band of travelers, about 20 wide. A couple of carts, a few mules, some supplies. Three humans, one of which is Drix, the other two being his buddies, or so far as anybody can tell so far. A number of half-elves and a number of elves. And one strange, very tall woman, who seems also elven in nature. The ride has been not exciting. There has not been much in the way of danger. A few pockets of rain here and there. And... <coughs> Sorry. Um, we'll pick up in the narrative with Drix Rug giving a bit of a history lesson to the caravan. <clears throat> well, you see, the Copulous Sierras are a treacherous and deadly mountain range. However, this one pass has existed between the continents, the countries of Duhana and Talon Ure together. It was constructed nearly 300 years ago, during a war effort, to more easily cross this range. Today, though, it's just paved roads and crumbles of what was left. Um, scattered with rubble. It's uh, been a very useful passage for me and my crew, looking to aid those of your ilk further to the south. Go ahead and make perception checks for me. Alrighty then. And we're off. As he goes on to talk a little bit here and there about this mountain range and that peak top and sopliferous history lessons that <laughs> I should have kind of drag on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Noise. Uh, where the hell is perception? 
we are. Excellent. <laughs> RJ, you are far too concerned with your own your own uh, business to notice. However, the other two of you, um, while he's giving this history lesson, you see up in the clouds, ever so briefly, you catch a glimpse of something that breaks through the bottom of the cloud line, just for a moment, and then it's gone. Like a reflection of light that scintillated a, a quick rainbow-like pattern of color, and then it's gone. Nobody else seems to notice it but you two. On this note, now that we have people looking around as well, why don't we, starting with you, Mark, give a little physical description of your character and anything that these people traveling with you for the past week may or may not have noticed. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'll actually start with the picture. Very tall, as you stated, elvish, elvish ears, kind of a tan but grayish tint to her skin uh, she dresses in very natural colors very simple clothing but natural has a full cloak as you can see there that is currently being shown as open and a hood which is often drawn up over her head as she stands off on her own more times than not the uh, I read. Uh, I wrote a little thing here uh, for her description. I'll just read it if that's okay. All right. So, when you first noticed her, I got a little thing I wrote here. If you round the corner or in an area and, and she's there, first you notice, oh my god, she's so tall. Quickly followed. Holy shit, she is stunned. She stands quite motionless at times, except for her eyes that track and follow every move. She notices you before you noticed her, but appears to pay no mind to you. As you stand there a while, you start to take her in. Tall, slim, solid. How do you put it? Or her beauty is hard to explain. Beautiful, stunning, striking, magnificent, magnificent enchanting. Dazzling, intoxicating, and breathtaking all at once. She is so beautiful. It's all consuming. In the same breath, she has a look of intensity that is hard to grasp. Not a smile, not a scowl, but for sure, some attitude. Let me go back to the picture. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where was I at? Uh, no sort of attitude. She stands straight, her arms folded in front of her. And you stare at her. She avoids locking eyes, will not catch your gaze. But she continually scans the area as the people move. As time passes, you notice someone approaches to her to speak to her. She shyly turns her head, quietly steps aside to avoid the approach. Do you just diss this person, or is she shy? Clearly, she has no intent to entertain the whimsy of a discussion, of a talk. For some reason, it's hard for you to take your eyes off of her. How can someone that quiet, not engaged with those around her, fill the room with her presence? You don't dare approach her, as you see time after time, she does the same thing towards others. Why is she so uh, taciturn? T-A-C-I-T-U-R-N. You have to look it up. Like, yeah. <laughs> You can catch yourself continually to stare. Suddenly, her eyes shift and focus on something to your left. Her body seems to slightly tense. And a moment later, you hear a crash as somebody drops something. She noticed and reacted to it before it even hit the ground. Once people react to the crash, many other people react to the crash, startled and lurch away, then move into hell. And at the same moment, she moves away. Her movements are graceful and light. Every movement is like a step of a dance, purposeful and graceful. You look again at the mess being cleaned up. You can't help but look there towards her. She is gone. She has not spoken to any of you. You have not spoken to her. But she's always around. 
headset for my main drum. RJ? Reginald is uh, quite is uh, quite a, quite small for being a gnome, around three foot. He uh, he came from basically a simple nomadic lifestyle when in a caravan similar to this one, except with gnomes, going from city to city until he figured out that what he wanted to do with his life was to help others through uh, medicinal and becoming a doctor himself through uh, talking with clerics and the like. So he mentored under them until he found that he knew enough to try to set out by himself out to the world, going to town to town, eventually settling down in a small village between a, uh, a small village in a valley where he uh, took the time, got to know the people, and started to feel compassion for them and help them as much as he could till one day the plague hit and all the people that he knew and loved were finally gone and he couldn't do anything about it, no matter how much he knew about all all the medicinal effects that he had under his belt all the potions he could brew nothing could help these people anymore and he had to leave so he started his journey he, uh, for the most part, Reginald looks li like a scholar. He shouldn't be outside of a major town or an office. B a beard immaculately uh, groomed and a toss of mousy brown hair. The only thing that he carries around with him is a crossbow on his back and a bag full of odd and odds and ends, but Quite, it smells quite medicinal and uh, herbal for most people. And right now, all he's trying to do is try to find a way to cure the plague that he couldn't find before. And he's going town to town trying to figure out what this plague was in the first place. Tawin. Excellent. Indeed. Tawin is a human. Well, is a. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> a human with long ears. Yes. <laughs> Tawin is a male elf. He. Um, his history. Um, from what most people. From what everyone could tell from just looking at him is. One of a, uh, a a wild elf, a wooden elf. Um, he spent most of his time in, actually, his whole his whole life in the woods, up till this point. Uh, Age-wise, he's young for a elf. He's pretty much just reached uh, adulthood of a elf. What would be considered adult in elven uh, culture. Uh, a little bit taller than your average elf at six foot five. He's a uh, bigger as well. He's a uh, mus. He's much more muscular than a what an elf is usually pictured as, at about around two hundred pounds or something like that. The uh, first thing that someone would notice about him, though, is the scars and tribal tattoos across his body of the part well at least the parts of the body that aren't covered by um <clears throat> his armor that he wears he uh which his armor itself is actually quite interesting which it is a hide arm made out of woven uh wolf armor wolf and uh his headpiece is a uh, is a uh, is the head of the wolf itself um he carries a uh, sheep that's wooden that he uh, is you could tell that is very crudely painted with a uh, picture of a wolf he one could guess that he himself probably did it since 
he probably isn't a great artist and it shows on the shield on his back he carries a uh, a spear and four javelins that is his weapons of choice um personality wise anyone would pick up right now is he's pretty uh He's kind of antisocial. He definitely has not really talked to anyone in the group. He, <coughs> um, and when he does speak, he speaks, um, when he speaks common, at least his common is very broken. You can tell that sure. He understands common. He knows common for the most part, but he has definitely never spoken common as like it's definitely a second language one would say it's very uh yeah you could tell it's uh, it's definitely not his first language but when you listen to him speak elven it's completely different it sounds like a, a very uh intelligent a uh, pretty intelligent uh, intelligent level um but yeah, he, for the most part, keeps to himself. He has helped the uh, caravan with... He, he has most likely helped the caravan with uh, probably like a, a few animal attacks here and there. Like a, like a wolf or a bear that attacked the uh, caravan. He probably helped uh, fight it with his shield and spear. He seems like he's a uh, natural protector. And uh, that's that'll be his uh, brief description. Oh, one last thing is... Uh, The, uh, you would, most people would probably just mistaken it as another tattoo, but the, uh, there's one on his cheek, on his left cheek, that looks different. It doesn't look like it was, a uh, nicely, it was, it's a much more crudely done tattoo. It definitely looks like maybe it was burned into his skin, almost, instead of done nicely by a natural tattoo kit-like thing whatever they had back in these days. And that will be uh, the end of his description. Excellent. So, the couple of you see that strange flash of light in the sky. Um, but other than that, the hours go on, and night eventually begins to fall. Any particular things you guys do during this time before and as or as the uh, caravan itself is kind of finding a, a safer space to camp for the night? For uh, considering that my my perception is very <laughs> very bad. I'm probably uh, looking into my notes, jotting down uh, the what I can see are how the are my companions are looking right now. Okay, so you're just kind of taking note of this person looks a little sick, this person looks fine. Yep. Uh, in addition to keeping up with uh, some of the other wounds you have been tending. Yep. To some of the. Uh, others traveling with you. The caravan itself has provisions that they've been providing along your journey. Um, they have plenty of clean water and fresh food that they picked up in Cephals. Uh, it is estimated um, to be another couple of weeks until you reach the nearest town of import, but that you might find other villages once you guys get south of the mountain range. But you are just getting into the beginning of the mountain range itself. You've only been in it for a day and a half or so. <clears throat> Sorry about that. A little distraction. No worries. Um... The camp beds down, and Drix can be found, as he can be found most evenings, playing his guitar for those of the caravan, 
along with a couple of his buddies who do a bit of singing, and one has a drum. They try and keep the spirits light, but for the most part, people don't seem very talkative or eager to socialize. Did anything come of that flash in the sky? Sorry. It was just something that you had noticed. Okay. I'll be watching out sharply for it as I stand to the side, keeping an eye on everybody. Okay. I, uh, I go to where the music is and start to set up shop for anybody who might need minor medical attention. Okay. Uh, is there a, uh, did we notice a creek nearby? A what? A, cr a creek or some water flowing from the mountains, ah. a mountain creek. Uh, yes, actually, this mountain pass that you have been traveling along, there's been a river that frequently cuts right up next to the path, travels with it for a while, then splits back off into the mountains. Whether it's multiple creeks or rivers or the same one, you can't tell. Um, to set a little bit more of the scenery of the mountains and its pass itself, there has been a number of retainer walls that looks like they've been mortar and pestle to keep back and hold the earth, where it looks like the path has been actually dug through sections of the mountain, uh, where it gets a bit more craggy. Uh, there's also a number of pockets where it opens up into small vales, um, where there's a bit of grassland and a, and a copse of trees here and there. Uh, overall, the terrain goes up and down quite a bit, and it's very much so like hiking, uh, particularly when you're not, when you don't find yourselves on one of the uh, carriages being pulled by these sad-looking mules. And carriages don't move faster than thirty than our normal movement rate, right? No, in fact, they're because of the, the group of the size and that there's a number of caravans, you actually move a bit slower than you probably could make headway on on foot by yourself. So, yeah, I probably would have never gotten on a, on a wagon or a, a cart. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been walking along long steps, gracefully, either to the back or to the side. Um, a nightly ritual, I guess, you've, if anybody's been paying attention. Um, she looks around, everybody looks off to where she knows that we just saw some maybe water nearby, a stream nearby, and slips out off to the side into the wood. <laughs> just before we set up camp, like early, early, and just as we stop. Mm -hmm. okay. Must be nice to have long legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could imagine one of her steps is like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> nearly nearly seven foot tall, all butt, with her hair poofing up over seven. Yeah, um, Tywin at night would be uh, setting up his hammock and getting ready for sleep time whenever he decides to fall asleep. So you have to, so Tywin has to go through the process of finding a suitable hammock location every night? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, for some reason, picturing him with a hammock, okay? Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I like <laughs> For some reason, I like giving my characters hammocks because I gave one that I took back in the day too. I don't think um, I used it. As you have uh, set up camp here in the middle of the fest, the minor festivities here, Reginald, there there are a couple of times where people come up to you asking for clean bandages or um, a, a couple of of the traveling compatriots dance from time to time, and and tonight one sprains their ankle. Okay, I uh, I take a ten and to to heal whatever needs to be healed during the night. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, then I just do a small talk, ask them how they are today. Are they as anything else is bothering them? Anything I can do to help? A little chit chat. Uh, well. Make uh, also making note on the type of uh, any other abnormalities that I can see on people coming towards me. Go ahead, make a perception check. <laughs> Hopefully, or no, I'm work. sorry, a heal because this is more the nature of what you're trying to do. You're looking for physical issues. 
Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, there's bruises here and there on a number of the half-elves, but uh, s some minor blood legions from, you know, a hard impact. Uh, there have been a couple of times where the caravan's gone underneath some cliff faces and some rocks have fallen off and struck a couple of people. Okay. And, but other than uh, that, nothing to note. Tell me, have they told me anything outright? I, if I am working on an elf, I'll be talking elvish with them. Uh, I mean, you hear a few rumors. Uh, one one woman tells you of a sickness her husband once died of, uh, where he just couldn't stop coughing and he started hacking up blood and eventually. He fell to whatever the illness was. Um, you hear another that, you know, uh, their their brother had fallen off a tree and the broken limb caused them to develop some sort of more severe. But nothing, nothing that really sticks out of note. Okay. And I just keep doing this for the night while I'm, uh, listening to the music and the murmurs uh, around me. It's not the greatest of music, but it's it's definitely a little better than nothing. Um. <laughs> and other than that, the night passes. People find their way to bed. It's... Not entirely chilly up here, despite you being up in the mountains, you're nowhere near the high peaks where it's consistently cold. And it is um, midsummer, uh, so the climate here is rather comfortable at this point. In the morning, the caravan gets together and begins its journeys, and the next day and a half, two days, go by uneventfully. Um, the so, third day. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. One more thing that you would have noticed, I guess. Um, when it comes down to night time, she doesn't uh, join with the group. She sits kind of off to the side around camp, but a de de decent distance away from everybody. And sits cross cross legged. I guess what is it, lotus style, or what is the? Mm -hmm. Lotus style cross leg. It kind of just kind of sits there in a trance during the time that other people are asleep. Hmm. Also, down around the camp, both in the morning, early in the morning, because she's quick up. And she goes through her maneuvers, you might call them. They're dances. They, it's just like she's constantly working out how she moves her arms and her legs and and uh again it's it's uh again just as a descriptive thing it's uh, it's obviously martial arts of some sort you, 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 there's no doubt about it and but her moves are very fluid and graceful she dances but with purpose in all of her moves and all of her how she or her legs move extremely agile at some one point you can see her kick her leg up straight up just as straight up as a leg could possibly go which for anybody who's not that limber would be seem very odd standing on her toes at times dancing around as she does whirling around a rope that has a couple of weights attached to it swirling them and then wrapping them quickly back around her body and around her arm and then when she's done she steps out of the way and continues on with her day this is a daily activity that she does morning and night. Other than that, keeps to herself, walks along with the group, always vigilant, always always aware. And on the note of any sort of practice regimen or whatnot, um, the only other people who do carry weaponry among the group would be Tawi, the three of you, if you have any at all, um, not even Drix carries weapons, but his two human buddies, they do. They have longbows and um, some short swords that they keep. 
And some of the ways that you, your group gets food from night to night as they travel is those two <laughs> friends of Drick's, they are gone for a large majority of the day, off to the side hunting as the caravan passes along suitable copses and, and uh, batches of trees. So, midday, a few more days down the line, you've been in the mountains for five, six days at this point. It's beginning to get a little similar everywhere you go and getting used to the idea of hiking despite your sore legs for those who are walking. Um, the hunters are off doing their thing when Drix halts the caravan and holds up a hand. Says, uh, looks like we got people uh, up ahead. Uh, looks around, realizes his guys are out to hunting. Uh, anybody want to parlay with them? Um, <laughs> I mean, I yeah. will if we have to, but people are unsavory on these roads, so best use caution. You know, I, I, I'm gonna go. I, I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Wh whoever wants to come with me, um, I'll take care of this. Uh, but the rest of you just stay here if you wish, and I, I follow him. Uh, I'm, I'm watching intently as he speaks, uh, and and then follow by a pace behind at a distance. Uh, uh, and I, I also whisper saying, uh, "Probably shouldn't be me to talk to them. Uh, this place, this area, doesn't seem to like me very much." That's okay, little one. That's why we got the carriages. <laughs> Just a note: Tywin would not come. Okay. Um, as you guys, th there may be a couple hundred feet out and up ahead, and as the, the three of you begin to make your way towards that way, Kaween, you stay behind and you're keeping your normal watchful and guarded stance. Uh, the other two of you, it becomes pretty quickly apparent that they're not just people coming towards you on the trail. In fact, it seems, there, there are three of them, three, three figures that you see standing. Two of them are off to the side and they're... It looks like they're hacking or kicking at something that's partially obscured behind some sort of rocky outcropping. As the third one just kind of stands in the middle and seems to have made notice that you guys are coming up and you see a motion over to the other figures and hey, kind of wave and get their attention and the other ones start to stand up from behind the rock and... and uh, take attendance behind the, uh, the, the lead one. Drix kind of meagerly approaches and just hail friends. Uh, other travelers, uh, maybe you'd wish to uh, share in a, a night's meal with us. Are you headed south or north? You just hear back over the like fifty or sixty f so foot distance that he calls out from. One of the guys, that he looks human in nature, uh, all of them do, says, Sod off! Turn around! None of your business of yours here. <coughs> uh, do I see, can we see anything behind the rock yet? You can, now that you're closer. You see two legs. But they're not uh, really moving. I I whisper to Drex, I think there might be somebody in, who's hurt behind that rock. Yeah, I'm kind of seeing that. Um, I'm not really the fighting type. Uh, maybe, maybe we should just maybe find a side path and go around. Uh, if you can uh, somehow get them away, I could try to bring him somewhere safer. We can't just leave somebody hurt, can we? I mean, these are dangerous times. Uh, I've lost many on the trail before, and usually not to other travelers, but I, I, I guess I'll, I'll step forward a bit and uh, see what I can do. Or we, there is another way. Now, the, I noticed that two of our 
traveling companions have at least some combat experience that could help us. Just in case, maybe? I mean, we got the call check here. Uh, and he kind of looks back towards uh, towards uh, you, Tawin, and just kind of waves and waves you for uh, The motion's you to come forward. He, he would, uh, he would notice the, uh, the interesting, uh, group that you guys are talking to at this point. Noticing you waving me forward, he would be a little, like, give, give you guys a little bit of a dirty look as he's, like, somewhat annoyed, but <laughs> starts to slowly walk that way as he's, feels like he might be, uh, of need up, up here. But doesn't speak whatsoever. Indeed. Mm. Um, as you're making your way up towards the rest of the pack, um, the the lead man who has been <coughs> shouting at Drix hasn't really started the, come on, just piss off, old man, uh, as you guys have kind of huddled to your side conversation you just had. And he's kind of taking a few steps forward as the other two go behind the rock and seem to move the legs or whatever it is you had seen a little bit further out of view. So I'm, I'm taking note of everybody on the field, trying to make sure that I know where everybody's at. I'm playing particular attention, but I'm not getting closer yet. Indeed. Do I see that the person talking to us have has any obvious wounds? Uh, n no, not at a, at a moment's glance. He doesn't seem to have any major wounds or injuries. Is there any blood anywhere nearby? Go to make a perception check for that one. <laughs> I am not very perceptive. There's a nice breeze. <laughs> um, you know, you're looking around for blood and you, you see a stick... <laughs> uh, it's a funny looking stick, but but no blood. Actually, if there's breeze, do I smell blood? Because I've probably worked around a lot of blood if I'm a doctor. Um, <coughs> Probably not from this distance, if there were any. But you did oh. see some legs get dragged off behind the rock. It's not too far to, you know... Yep. Push two and two a bit together. Um, the the this person who continues to walk down the road toward you, and he's about thirty feet away from you guys at this point. When he says, right, so "How many how many people do we see on the uh, have I noticed so far?" There seem to be three, two at the rock, and this one guy. Yeah, and is the rock to the right or the left? Your left. My left. There's yeah. off to the right. This happens to be a portion of the uh, path where the stream has kind of kicked back up, um, twenty or so feet off the edge of the the pathway here, and to, which is to your right. And off to the left, there's um, kind of the edge of a bit of a uh, bush and tree line. Okay. And uh, and uh, so and then what kind of weaponry do I have I noticed, if anything, on any of the? Well, to mention that, the guy who is pulling closer towards you, he says, Look, I don't want to have to make this anything more than it needs to be. And he pulls this longsword from his scabbard. Clearly threateningly. And he kind of just points it out towards you. Turn around now, and find another way. And what about the other two? Did we see any weaponry on them? They're quite a bit further back, but you saw scabbards of some sort. Let me uh, double check. These are humans, right? They seem to be, as you get closer into view. Alright, gotcha. Can I use Knowledge of Nature to figure out if uh, there's a safer path, or this is the safest path? Yeah, go ahead. Please be rolling well this time around. <laughs> there we there go. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, while you haven't really been paying attention to much, you, you have paid attention to the landscape as you've come through these mountain ranges, and um, 
on this section there, there is the other side of the river. It might be difficult to get the wagons and, and, and carts across, but there was a few narrower portions a bit further back. You might have to double back a day and a half, or a, a half a day's worth or so, but you recall seeing some sort of crossing, and um, other than that, to your left, it just starts sheer cliffing upwards into a mountain yeah. peak. But there's more openness to your to your right. I try to say, uh, I, I, I don't think we can actually go back. It's at least a day or two to be able to double back, come back this way to get through. Why don't you just let us go through here? We won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I'll, and as I step to the left, I kind of uh, look back at um, Tawin and just see whether you're actually coming up or not. Oh, he's coming up and... If he noticed the when he noticed like the uh, their weapons getting drawn, you kind of see him like, all right, let's do this. As he gets his shield ready and starts to pull out one of it, starts to pull out his spear, as he's trying to be intimidating right back towards them. Okay, and then I just kind of I'm I'm stepping off the left a little bit and I have my uh, my rope things in my hand ready. It Drix at this point, he's kind of shulked back ten feet or so away from what seems to be something that's escalating. Um, kind of quietly and, you know, off to the side. I'm being very non-threatening. Indeed. Um, and the man gets like twenty feet or so from you. His other compatriots have begun to move up on you as well. Or they're they're still quite a bit further behind this lead guy. Okay. Uh, did he say anything about me trying to you? Um, me trying to get through? He looks over his shoulder, sees his two buddies approaching, and well, <laughs> you could always just pay a toll. Well, how much? Hmm. Say 30 blues. That should do. Uh, how smart do these people look? <laughs> uh, not, not particularly. They're definitely not master tacticians, by any looks. And are we over a cliff or anything? Uh, no, to the left it more so just rises up into cliffs, you're more on the downside, and to the right it, the nearest thing of note is the stream. Alright, tell me if this will, if you'll allow this. Uh, Reginald goes into his pockets trying to look like he's looking for gold <laughs> and anything to pay with, takes one of his bombs... <laughs> <laughs> puts a long refuse on it, lights it, uh, I can't find anything, holds it up to him and says, can you hold this for a sec? I need to look for him through all my pockets. <laughs> uh, wow, what does that fall in? I guess that's kind of like a bluff, isn't it? Not really, I'm actually looking for gold. So I'm just taking out a weapon uh and giving it to him. Uh, he'll make an int check to see if he's <laughs> stupid enough to fall for this. <laughs> um, and 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 this is the point where where we'll shift over because of his role into this scene, <laughs> where <laughs> he kind of takes these this few steps back and goes, "What the." Boys, they're being crafty on us! And the other two <laughs> draw swords and and roll initiative as uh, things very quickly start to escalate. Alright. As he sees the sparks at the top of the fuse, and it's like, oh ho ho! Ain't not having to know! <laughs> nice try. <laughs> For a split second, he was walking with, like, you know, toward you with hands outstretched a little bit. Like, I mean. I'll take whatever you're giving me, yeah. But then he sees that fuse and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, and let me uh, grab the initiative... Um, oh, 
I'll just add it this time. Uh, in the future, um, once I have the initiative oh, yeah. tracker up and you have your token selected, it'll auto add. But I can just yeah. add you guys real quick. Yeah. I forgot. I'm. Oh, uh, I was I was uh, slow on the draw there. Looks like uh, Mark has left us for a minute. Uh, yeah, he's getting wife aggro. <laughs> he has a he has another encounter he's dealing with. <laughs> I'll just say soldiers for now. Quick question, since I already have my weapon out and it's fused and I was gonna give it to him, can I if I see this, can I just throw it at uh, can I just roll it at him right away? It kind of like a sneak attack type thing, like a like a surprise round action. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's your first thought, once he kind of recoils a bit and like begins yeah. to, hey boys, then uh, then yeah, for sure. Okay. And I will I'll roll his initiative real quick since he is not here because it's probably low. <laughs> yeah. Which oh is fine. Gosh. We're this is the way we kind of want our initiative. My sorry, roll uh, twenty hates me right now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got Jace aggro and Philippines aggro. <laughs> uh -huh. It's fun. <gasps> All right. What do we need? Initiative. Kill that. Yeah. yeah. Ignore. Right, ignore right. that roll. You can roll your. All own right. Gotcha. Uh, where's my roll? And select your token. Oh. Uh. Where's my token? Uh, I Oof. don't see my token. It's a good thing you had quick thoughts there, Reggie. <laughs> okay. Uh. Initi initiative. There we go. Minus you three. Have a negative three initiative. Oh yeah. right, should have just taken the ten. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you. I'll... No, 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 no. no. You, it, either way, you're last. Yeah, okay. you're last no matter what. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with your quick thinking, go ahead and do your bomb attack. Sweet. And I roll. So, 11. Uh, between him being a little bit more reactionary, he doesn't quite dodge out of the way, but the shield he had and uh, kind of buckled to his other arm, he quickly kind of like baseball bats it off to the side, um, and that will miss him. Okay, then he can roll a... Considering that there's nobody near him that would... Yeah, it's just going to be him. Uh, what's your DC? 13 for half damage. Half of splash damage? Yep. Which is, what's the splash? Minimum damage, so that is 4. Okay, here's where I'm realizing I need paper and my pen. Oh, wait, no, that's why I have... Token set up. Herp derp. <laughs> I'm used to pen and paper. Uh, <laughs> I love pen and paper. Uh, I'll probably mix between both. Because <laughs> there will be fights that don't use battle maps either. More narrative maps. Um, but I uh, just wanted to get the tactical aspect of this thrown out into the gate. Alright. So yeah, I mean, he still kind of hops out of its way for the most part. Um, and that does bring it to them. Uh, oh, does Miguel move? That was a surprise because of the way he yeah. initiated oh, it. Oh, forward surprise round? Okay. It was just him. It was just him. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Miguel. <laughs> they the, those two begin to advance, uh, although a little bit on the edgy side. They're kind of waiting to see how you guys, for the most part, react. This guy, however, not having it. <laughs> and he runs up. And a 19 probably hits your defense. Yep. Oof. 
Oof. Seven. Seven, seven damage before DR. So seven full damage. That's a nasty first hit. But that does yes, bring it to Tawin as you see your little doctor friend that's been traveling with you just get slashed across the chest. Alright, so just as an idea. All right, he's 25 feet away from me. Now, yep. I did change... Now, I know originally I had spears. I changed uh, those out for uh, javelins, at least my thrown one. Mm -hmm. So I have four javelins and one spear. So so they have a range of 30 feet. If I throw one before I move, is, it, is, uh, is RJ in my way or not? He is in melee with it, so it is going to be a little harder to hit him. Alright, then I won't do that. I'm just going to move. Let's see. 5, 10, 15. Also, 20. it's come to my attention your little character thing still shows Miguel's sheet and nameplate. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. That's better. <laughs> so I'll... No, actually, I was right here, right? Let's see. You were within 25 feet, so you could get up to either side of him if you wished. Yeah. Yeah, move, move the other side. Tactics! Yeah, no, I'm... <laughs> so... 5, 10, 15, 20... Wrong side. Wait, what? Wrong side? Hey, never mind. You, you do you. Oh, I got, I got what you're saying. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because you're going to go. Gotcha. Yeah. So let me just make sure I can do. That. Yeah, I can do that easily. Yeah, you're fine. <clears throat> I'll move right here. Mhm. Mm and then just give him a good old. Actually, since I'm going to be attacking, uh, melee range. I'll free action blood rage. Okay. Giving me my um, plus four to strength and con. Oh no 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 no! That's not the one I meant to do. Uh, do, 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 do. And then con. Do, 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 do. And then I'm just going to stab him with my spear. Mm, stabby stabby. Stab away. Uh, that is a... Indeed. 13, 14, 15. 17. 17. With 7 damage before, uh... Nice. <clears throat> uh, DR. It, it catches... The, uh... For the bulk of his armor, but still does seem to do... Some, some, some damage. Alright. That will bring it to Reggie. Reggie will take a five foot step back. And then his move action will be to move. Here. Mm hmm. Uh, taking his mutagen, increasing his. Defense and his all his shtick. You know the shticks. Oh, yes. Stick it up. Which one are you doing, though? The only one that I care about. It will be my con. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> he just got hurt. He got to get not so hurt. Four con. Yeah. Negative to charisma. My wounds are up to forty. So if I, re yeah. So if I remember right, Navar, when I increase my con, it increases my wounds, right? The amount of wounds I can take. It will, yeah. It'll automatically increase your maximum. You'll just need to increase your current wounds. Gotcha. All right, there we go. Yeah, now we're good. All right. Uh, where is 
the one where I thought I added that in already. Ah, ah there it is. Armor. Okay, now, I'm good. How many rounds can I do this again? Uh, six rounds. All right, that it for you, Reggie? Yep. Miss Mysterious. Okay. All right, so in a flurry of moves, I don't want to use the word flurry. In a in a series of moves, she this this rope comes out and she starts spinning it around around her head, swinging it swinging it around as she steps up steps forward to about here to start oh, about here still out of range still within range and the th and flings the rope forward as the weighted end of it a, a the sharp with a sharp point of it flings towards this character and um let me go defensive Sorry about this, let me... Otherwise I'm going to forget everything if I don't do this. Okay. Uh. That'll still hit with the 16. And it just slashes him right across uh, the arm, actually impacting him quite a, quite a good hit. Oh yeah. Um, how do we make it so that it doesn't show it to just you when we do the attack roll things? Well, you have yeah. to change all the macros. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So it's a, instead of WGM, you just take the GM off, I think. Let me try one. This doesn't doesn't count. I think you just take that off, and then do you? Oh no. Uh, a slash W E M. Is that it? Uh, in any case, the soldiers continue to do. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll just have to fix the macros later. Um, yeah. Okay, I think. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. I agree, I'd like to fix those as well. Yeah. I didn't realize that was still a thing. Uh, so the one up next to you, Tawain, uh he immediately switches to swinging his sword at you. Yeah. A 14 versus defense. Uh, right now, because I am raging, that will, I think, hit, but let me double check. Uh, minus, yeah, my AC right now is 13 when I'm raging. For 5. Oh, defense. For 5, so. Before DR. Alright, so, you know, so he's using a sword, right? Yeah. Alright, so. That does one damage to me. <laughs> Between your uh, armor. Yeah. So that takes one vigor point away from me. And then he steps and back, kind of taken aback by the fact that he, he does like a hua and then steps back. Gotcha. Uh, I'm by me. Guy gets up here. This guy gets here, and they each come in with their long swords as well. Just ah! as they run forward, the first will be a twenty-one versus Tawine. I'll hit for three damage. So I take no damage. Yep. With DR. And the other one is a nine versus. What can we call you by in the interim? Um, Give us something at least. Monk. Just say monk okay. for now. A nine um, towards the monk. And uh, you notice that as she's spinning these ropes around, she just spins one around and ping knocks the sword right back away from away from her. It does not. It does not hit her. You said nine, right? Yeah. She dodges and. Tawin. Ty, let me make sure. Check this ability real quick. Person. Alright, as a... So, 
Drix, in the meantime, has, has moved behind this rock. All right. So when, so when he actually penetrated my, arm, so <clears throat> he would have gotten my skin a little bit mm -hmm. and made me bleed a little bit. Let's say he got like right across my bicep or something. You, this would be the very first time any of you guys would notice this. My blood, as you would see, just like a little slither of blood. But my, but Taween's blood is definitely different. His blood is black. The blood that's leaving his body currently is black. As he then, as an immediate action after he got attacked, he wipes the blood off his arm, spreads it across his spear, the head of his spear, doing, as I activate the uh, ability of my blood rager, black blood. Which now... When I take damage from a slashing or piercing attack, as an immediate action, I grant my melee attacks with the Frost Weapon Special ability for two rounds. So then, with that, I will attack with my spear mm -hmm. against the guy in front of me. Uh, t -t 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 see. 12. Uh, that is 11, unless you're getting another 11. plus one. No, you're right, 11. Uh, which does miss. He, again, with his shield, just blocks the attack, and it glances off, hitting the ground instead. And you All see right. him give you this quizzical look of, what the fuck did you just do as you did that thing with your blood? Reggie. Reginald. Uh... I probably acknowledge that none of them, none of my compatriots are hurt at the moment, so I imbibe a true strike. Oh, ho, ho. a true strike uh, potion, spreading my attack. You are incredibly confident that your next attack is going to go exactly where you want it to throw. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to bother shifting experience. I know, or that turn order. It's <laughs> um, monk. All right. So in a, as if like, as if by just pure, she spins around and the ropes just kind of wrap around her body, as if it just, you know, like a dance move. The ropes that she was spinning around, she spins around a couple of times. They wrap around, and they're and the, and their way with her fists out. She uh, like a a a static charge kind of forms around her almost. It seems like 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 we, you can kind of you're kind of a little bit far away, but you can just see the hair on the guy's uh, arms next to him kind of stand a little bit as she swings her fists, flurry of blows, unarmed strike uh, uh, against the, this guy that's next to her, and that will hit. Intimidate. As a crack of lightning strikes near him, off her fist, not, not doing him damage, but kind of like a staticky, like you'd see from a what's one of those things that the light, the balls, the Tesla coils. Mm -hmm. He definitely seems taken aback by this. Um. And as as if as if a as if a singular motion, her other hand comes out, and there is a blade in her hand, nailing the dude with an uppercut. Crit, crit. What do you need me to roll? Uh, he has to roll to try and resist. Which he does not. Okay. Excellent. Would you like the card, or would you like the double damage? <laughs> for fun, let's go for card. And this is a slashing weapon? Uh, yes, slashing. Okay, so you won't... Oh, boy. You won't be getting the extra damage. However... Uh, this bag of d6s... Is... 
you chop three of his sword hand fingers clean off. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> Doing one constitution and one strength damage in the process. And now and he's ten. missing three fingers. And ten damage. Plus the damage before. Yes. So, uh, well, uh, it's, it's yeah. After no, it, it's three, it's and then ten. it's the stormal damage, so it's only the six. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, three, then six, right? Yeah, he did not enjoy that one. We bet it is. He lets out this screaming, howling yell. Uh, actually, uh, five foot and five foot steps. This direction. Okay. Barely able to hold this sword. Like, he almost drops it, but he grabs it, the hilt with his other hand instead. He, uh, he looks to his one buddy, the guy who seems to be the leader. Um, the one in front of Taween, he he's gonna throw a strike in. <laughs> nah, natural one. <laughs> but he goes to swing at you. T- <laughs> These guys... Went from potentially threatening looking to very unthreatening. <laughs> um, as <laughs> as he swings the sword at you, Tawin, he hits your shield and it just bounces off and over and behind you and out of his hand and lands 15 feet behind you. Tawin would laugh at this and be like, stupid. <laughs> Human. He steps back. This guy moves back over here, and the the leader guy's looking to either side. He's like, um, look, look, look. We don't have to go down this route. I mean, you mute. I mean, we we were just we were just looking to make some coin. All right, we we. And he just like kind of stammers as he moves back, <laughs> um, defensively. Uh, as that brings it to Taween. Taween, uh, his history with humans is not the <laughs> greatest, in his opinion. As the guy only takes a five foot step away from him, he, he takes a five foot step right back. <laughs> He's like, <coughs> You started this and made me. And now let's end this. There's this look of oh shit on his face. <laughs> Human. As he uh, spear attacks for 14. Oh yeah, that hits and does some damage. So 5 damage plus he is still under the his weapon is still considered a frost weapon. Is that what one point or is it a die? It's a die. It's okay. consider <laughs> it's the same thing as a weapon under the uh, Oh yes, uh, yes, you get a d6. A D6. And four frost damage. Oh boy. Go, go, go. Uh, Reginald, you you know where this thing's gonna land. Yes, I do. I move here and throw a bomb <laughs> at this guy, at the leader. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Took a turn for the worst for them very fast. Ooh, and it's a nice one. You know, just 28. <laughs> Ooh, plus splash damage on the other dude, right? Yep. Yeah, which he has to try and reflex out of. Uh, which he, he does jump out of the way pretty well. Um, as he's already, like, half turned around attempting to flee. Uh, this guy, it just direct hit. For full seven. He's burning! He's burning, everyone! Oh yeah, he's certainly a flame. Monk. Steps in. Uh, first is a... As a... Uh, <coughs> I, can, I can do my Intimidate with a kick, too, right? If it's a non-lethal... Yeah, non-lethal flurry of blows... Her, she she s- spins around. Her foot comes back over the top of her head, it seems, and smacks the dude. 
for 12. Uh, it does hit. Does hit. It does hit. Intimidate. <laughs> severe intimidate. Oh yeah. As another, as like static again forms around her, just like the speed of her motion seems to cause static form, and she whap, and like a crack of lightning cracks up as as she hits the dude square in the face. Oof. And without, and as if, as if in a motion. So now he's all those negatives apply currently, right? Is a motion. Her other hand comes around and up, up from underneath. That misses though. Maybe nine. Although he's got negatives. Now. Um, you did non-lethal on the first strike, so no. The first one's not non-lethal, so it's intimidated, so he gets intimidated negatives. Correct. So he didn't actually drop a wound category because it was non-lethal. No, I intimidated. I, I know. Oh, 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 oh. I see what you're saying. For the attack roll itself. Yeah. A nine? No, that still misses. Okay. okay. All right. But she swings, swings wide. Okay, that's it. Um. Remember the intimidate. It's negative. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. These two. Uh, also, I'm picking up every single word off your mic that I say. Every single time. Um. Oops. That one does not do that. I was not trying to grab him. <laughs> <laughs> These two look to each other, the two in the back, and they are just in utter horror of this situation they have found themselves in today. And they double move away. <laughs> they say the, some effect of... Good luck! Run with front if you can! Uh, and book and leave their friend in the dust. Uh, this guy, um, looking quite terrified, gets gets a swing off. He's still not taking it with uh, with his with his hand in the sand. Uh, at Tawin. <laughs> you, 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 you minus, are correct. Minus two. Minus two. You are correct. So instead... Of swinging with his weapon, he full withdraws away. <laughs> All right. That would bring it to Tawin. If there's anything you do wish to do. Well, uh, let's see how far he is. He's seventy he feet is away. Seventy feet away from me. All right. So. so which, uh, he was adjacent, so he should be 60. Alright. I just kind of moved him. So. Let's see. That's 30. 60. Uh. Tywin just. Tywin just. Hmm. <laughs> He, he just stands there. He's just, like, a little disappointed that they decide to run away, but he's, he, he does not chase. <laughs> the one lost a sword. The one lost three fingers. <laughs> the other one was set on fire. They, they are not having a good day. Um, I just wanted to get through and maybe throw a bomb behind me. <laughs> so do, do any of you wish to pursue... No. I I have a crossbow. Yeah, you'll. I mean, you can get a couple shots off if you want. It's close enough. That guy. Uh huh. With uh, taking penalties. Nah, goes wide. Nah. Yep. Even with his negatives. Uh, I mean, you can get a second shot off at a negative two by the time they they move much further away. <laughs> because he's only one range increment out at that point. Crossbows normally have longer ranges, so... Well, well before that, I get a turn, right? Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. there anything that you would attempt to do? Just for show. Uh, run just extremely fast. It's like like a lightning blast. She, she runs. And then, with even though I know it's not going to reach, she takes her rope and she just swings it around. Whoosh! Right at the guy. <laughs> And then pulls it back. 
Oh yeah, yeah. It stands, it stands there swinging it around like this, you know, kind of in a, and again in major intimidation. <laughs> he's and then, <laughs> and then stops. He's looking over his shoulder as he runs, and he just oh, oh god! As, <laughs> as he 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 does fear for half a moment that that is gonna whip him in the butt. <laughs> I knew, it, but I, she knew it wouldn't reach. But that wasn't the point. Uh, Reginald, would you like that other shot before they get probably too I far? Do. Out of the range. I would. Goes wide again. Yeah, goes wide. But you you sent a couple of warning shots out at him. Tywin's already walking away. <laughs> He's like, I'm done with this. And I, uh, once they start leaving, I start running towards where he is. Indeed, that person over there behind the rock. Yep. Yeah, so you, I know there was, you know, behind the rock. As you get there immediately, um, you can see this half-elven male, probably younger, um, decently dressed, actually. Uh, he's got a satchel that lays scattered with its contents spewing out nearby. Um, and it looks like he... I mean, he's certainly been beaten. No slash marks, no immediate bleeding, but that's yeah. what you see at first glance, at least. Uh, How I... much does it look like that dude weighs? Not much. He's a half. He's a thinner half elf, maybe less than a hundred for sure. Uh, I, uh, could you uh, carry I, him for I, me? I think he needs medical attention, and I would rather not do it out in the open like this. I nod my head. With and, and pick him up, <laughs> and just with one hand, and just start talking, walking back towards the caravan. Okay, like this, <laughs> like you're holding a cat. Yep, by the scruff of the neck. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, so as you guys turn and begin to walk back toward the caravan, Drix kind of moves to intercept you guys, and he just goes. Oh my, my goodness! I, I didn't realize I was traveling with such uh, experienced, um, combatants. Uh, uh, before before he starts finishing, he's like, "I'm sorry, I just saw somebody hurt. I needed a, I felt like I needed to help him." No, no, I, I don't blame you. I, I'd have done the same if I was as strong as y'all were. I just, you know, I gotta think about myself too. I just got this, and he like has this little dagger that looks like he's been clutching with all of his strength as his fingers are like black and blue around it, <laughs> or, or blued, you know, when you like grip something super tight. Mm -hmm. um, yep. <laughs> the monk Could looks we, uh, at looks at him and nods. Looks at you and nods. Could we uh, take him to the caravan real quick? I think he might need first aid. Yes, yes, of course. Let's turn around and, and get him back to some safety. You can kill your mic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you might have to go on push to talk, honestly. Um, or I have to move to the other room during sessions, one of the two. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, he, so as you guys turn around and as, as this little group begin moving back with the... This, half elf of very very poor health what strikes you all first is probably the flash of light off to now that you're traveling back that way off to your right uh, up in the mountains somewhere suddenly a blinding flash of light explodes from the sky you look. You all immediately look over as it's very apparent, and you can see all of the clouds have just been. It looks like someone just pushed them all away from the center of something, and you can see the remnants of some sort of explosion. This enormous fireball in the sky, and then the su the shock wave hits you, and the sound of the explosion that nearly deafens you all for a moment. You can see this flaming rubble and debris that begins to fall from the sky into the mountains nearby. 
And with this shock wave, it seems this cliffside that you've been traveling nearby has been affected by this and destabilizes. And rocks just begin cascading and flying down as part of the cliff fully collapses. I'd like all of you to make reflex saves. Oof. Reflex save. As raining rocks begin pelting down from the sky. Alright. You all deathly dodge out of the way and only take a few hits here and there. And you all only take three non-lethal damage from glancing blows and slaps, but none of them directly, or none of the bigger ones directly pelt you in the head. Or, or any other vital spot. I can get up my mutagen on, so I have natural armor, so one non <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> For some of you, that doesn't even really hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah, our, net, our damage resistance. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Drix's face is uh, aghast, um, as he also does dodge out of the way of anything large. Um, but he just is staring back up north toward the road where you can see a large chunk of this cliff has just decimated the caravan. You hear already the screams and shouts of people. What do you all do? I start running. <laughs> it does. It's not continuing to fall. It's just like it was a big rush, and then it's done. Yeah, and there's one big fall start. of it all, and then it settles after thirty seconds or so. All right, run towards the caravan. So you all quickly. Tawin, Tawin was already heading that direction. So. Indeed. Yeah, I, I probably would have been like already right, like, almost there. And before, we, and, and before we get to something really rough or bad, if it looks like it's going to be super dangerous heading into this area, I'll set the guy down into kind of a, a pocket into this somewhere that looks relatively safe. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like there's any going to be much continuing danger per se. Uh, it looks like that what damage has been done is done. And... There are certainly people dead, though. Very, very certainly. Many trapped under the rocks, and even as you sprint up, Reginald, you can see one of them just take their final breath as the rock, the probably half a ton rock up on top of him, just crushes the last of his life from him. I go on my knees and start crying, but do I see anybody who uh, could use could be healed right now that needs it right now nobody immediately you might be able to dig through the rubble but that would probably take time but there's no this one like Im everything settles pretty quickly and it goes deathly silent okay drix yeah, is yeah, just yeah. dropped to his knees in tears yeah uh. There are two people on their knees, crying. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tywin is, like, kind of looking at what happened, kind of emotionless, as he... And the monk immediately tries to try to dig people out, trying to see if she can find anybody who's surviving, trying to pull them out and away to safety. Go ahead and make a strength check to see if you're able to lift some of the larger things out of your way as you're digging through and flinging rubble over your shoulder. Oops, Strength. those decks. Yeah, I mean, pretty massive stones you're able to lift and off to the side, but you move one where you saw a leg coming out from underneath and you see a guy, the top half of his torso entirely crushed in. Yeah, well, even if they're survivors, I'm trying to make sure they get out. I'm trying to get them out. If I, if I can't find dead, I'm trying to find... What If there's something living, I'm trying to grab them and get them out of there. <coughs> yeah, you guys dig through, but 
it doesn't seem anyone survived. There was a it was a massive section of the cliff that fell in this in this area. Ooh, no survivors. Not that you come across. <laughs> you do three come of, three of us, Drix, and this half elf, half plane or whatever we just picked up. And was it a half lane? Half elf. Half elf. Half elf, okay. And one cart, carriage, and one mule survived. I get up and try and start going to where we left. Uh... No, I go up and ask the um, the monk, where did you, uh, where, where, was, where was the person? Did you, where did you leave them? I, I need to do something, anything right now. She's, she's looking at you straight in the face. She points. She points off to where he's at. And I uh, slowly make my way there. And are we relatively safe? Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any more falling rocks. The only thing that's causing any commotion is the mule that's still attached to the cart. That seems the the sound of the explosion spooked it and caused him to run off toward the river, which is probably the only thing that saved his life. Then I, uh, I'm gonna take a 20 on my heel check to take care of this guy. So you spend the next good amount of time or so, yeah. Um, it's about 20 times the amount of a normal heel check. Okay. Um, so you spend a few minutes, you know, really yeah. thoroughly looking over the guy. What does that bring your total to? Uh, that would bring my total to 23. Okay. So... With a 20 oh, no, 24. 24. With a 24, you see that it looks like they didn't do any actual physical damage to the guy. Looks like they just beat the living hell out of him. Um, equivalently, all non-lethal, mechanically okay. for you. Um, they just were kicking and pounding him with fists. He has a bruised face, maybe a couple of cracked ribs, but no long-term superficial damage, or long-term serious damage. All right. And you do so your best to clean him up, and he does seem, at least for the moment, unconscious. Okay. Ty mm -hmm. not wasting any time, like, worrying about the people under the rocks, instantly notices the one cart and just starts picking up what he can and just putting it on the cart. <laughs> yeah, there's just scattered bits of food, uh, some of the rations, some bedding, uh, just all about um, from and a couple of the other carts that were just exploded and sent flying all over the place. You're able to get back a number of supplies and calm the, the mule at a certain point. Yeah. He, he more cares about the mule than the people under the rock dying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Drix just, after a few minutes, looks up and... I... I don't even know what to say. I don't... What was that explosion and... Why was it in the sky and... Oh... Oh, these poor people. They didn't deserve to go like this. So, did I? Did we see exactly where that explosion hit or where we think it's at in the mountains? Do we have an idea? It, yeah, it was not too far enough away. I mean, uh, maybe a few thousand feet up into the mountains. Uh, a few miles, a couple miles maybe. It was, it's hard to say because it was up in the cloud level, uh, but it was close enough that the shockwave was able to... either that or the explosion was just so intense that the shockwave was able to do this sort of damage to this weak cliff. But you have a general idea as to where it fell. So the mob kind of motions to, towards, uh, towards Tawin with her hand. And points up to the mountain. And points to you as well. It says. <laughs> says nothing with pointing motions. Says nothing with pointing motions. 
<laughs> Ty, Ty Wien would look at the mountain, look back. What do you want? You 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 want to look at mountain? <laughs> I I don't me no comprende. She looks at the gnome. She looks at the gnome. Uh, for podcast purposes, still describe your hand motions. So she's yeah. So she's uh, yeah yeah right. Good point. I forgot about. It. We got to do audio too here. Uh, so again, not a word uttered out of her mouth. She's motioning, kind of like an like an explosion, like as if like something explodes. So she's trying to uh, uh, motion and then pointing to all of us, and then pointing up towards where the explosion was at. No. Is the gnome nearby? Is that where he left the body? Yeah, yeah, it was all real close. Oh. Just as we got up close to the edge, it was all right in the same vicinity. Okay, okay. And then I was like, the explosion is up in the mount? I ask yeah. in Elvish? She shakes her head, yes. Oh. I, uh... You speak Elvish, I see, gnome person. <laughs> Oh, I'm a doctor, and there were elves in my in the in the village. Ah, excellent. Good uh, to hear another one speak my native tongue. Uh, do you, Do you want to go and check out why this happened? She nods. Yes. <coughs> I go, Drix. Uh, can you? Are will you be all right by yourself? Taking and do you switch back to common as you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Dress yeah. Dricks. He's, he's just, just kind of looking back and forth at you guys like he clearly doesn't understand. Yeah. Our monk friend here thinks that the reason there might have been something up in the mountain that caused all this. And she wants to make sure it doesn't happen again, it seems. I mean, hell, it's, just, it's, it's not yeah, like... Yeah, yes. It's not like I got any people to get through the mountains anymore. Other than myself and you, but... Uh, she raises her hand and does. Uh, our friend is asking if, uh, if where are your uh, other our, our other friends, the hunt or the guards and hunters that you uh, travel with? Oh God, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I hope they come back this night. I don't know if they were. I don't know where they went off to. I just know they're off hunting. Um. If you all want to go check that out, maybe I should just stay with this mule, continue to gather some supplies, and wait to see if they return. I mean, it didn't look like it was that far. I don't really know that I'm up for any sort of climb or hike after that. I think that your friends might come soon, considering that that explosion was quite large. Hopefully they'll they're unharmed as well. I I hope so. I mean, if you want me to come with, I will. I don't I don't I just got this, and he meekly holds his dagger up again. I I don't know what I can do if we come across any trouble. She takes two fingers up, points to her eyes, points to him, and then points to the half elf on the on the. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'll just make sure this fella stays okay. I do have someone to look after. <laughs> and, um, I, I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, make sure, <laughs> make sure he keep his head elevated because okay, I think okay. he, he still passed out, and I wouldn't want him to choke on. On anything right now? Don't worry, little we'll, doctor we'll, man. We'll be right back. Uh, okay. I'll just look for the campfire, and you know, the old. Well, I'm. I'll be here. Uh, good luck. <laughs> and he just kind of looks back in this face of PTSD and. <laughs> Doesn't know what quite to do or say right now. Yeah, his whole world just got demolished. I mean, my god, that's got to be super traumatic for the guy. 
Are you sure? No, no, we're, it's, I'm speaking to you guys. <laughs> I love that the party language yeah, immediately yeah, became yeah, Elvin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Elvin. Elvish. <laughs> you thought that, uh, the, the one, at least both of them look similar to Elvin, so. Uh, yeah. And I one of them doesn't know. talk that much, so. I thought. All right. Yeah. Are you too sure that we want to do this? It's most likely something magical, and magic can't be trusted. It's never good. No. I'm gonna follow wherever the people lead me, and considering I did all I could here, the people who are probably gonna get hurt the most would be you two. While I'm drinking a, uh, my last some of my uh, extracts of heal to heal myself. <laughs> you, you're, the, you're the only one that got wounded. It's, well, I just took a little bit of damage, but. All right. If you two insist that we do this, I will. <clears throat> I will come. Does not sound like fun time, but let's do this. You're speaking Elvis. You don't. Oh no, that's. I, I'm still trying to. That's not. No, oh, no, that's not broken. Oh, you, okay. you are not ready for broken <laughs> comment. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So as the group of you begin to gather and depart from the path toward the direction of this explosion. How are you guys going about this escapade? Is there anyone in particular helming the navigation um, or any sort of particular method that the group of you use? It's for the most part to describe the terrain. Um, there are like little pathways here and there, animal trails that seem to go up and through. It's not like sheer mountainous rock side or anything like that. There's a lot of long sloping hillsides that have trees dotted around and throughout it, uh, occasionally broken by where it does start to spire off to any given side up towards towards a peak. So, uh, I know Tywin would probably insist that he leads the group. Yep. As he uh, starts, as he, f and would probably be one to follow like the animal trails and whatnot, as he doesn't want to get lost on the return back, and is keeping an eye on like landforms and whatnot, yep. so they can get back. And the monk would be behind and helping the, the little gnome, <laughs> as, you know, like lifting him up in areas that he can't seem to reach over, just kind of. <laughs> The gnome is totally fine with this, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she doesn't really even ask. She just kind of like grabs you and just lifts you up a little higher. Mm -hmm. If your little legs don't seem like they're going to reach over something. <laughs> uh, Any way in particular, Reginald, do you contribute toward the ongoings other than just keeping up? <laughs> well, well, I mean, I'm, make, I'm making sure he keeps up. Right, right. right. I keep my... It, eyes out for any uh yeah. okay and for anything out, outside of the ordinary through my uh, mostly from anything out of the ordinary nature wise in this area okay and, and if he and does it seem like he's falling real well, like behind often I mean, if you guys are full plow going, then occasionally yeah, but at the same time these are you know, hillsides that you're climbing, and it is a bit harder going through some patches in general, so. Okay. It, it kind of levels out. Um, so, effectively, it sounds... So, um, Tawin, why don't you helm the survival check? Okay. Uh, Reginald, you do the knowledge nature. And then, uh, Monk, what sort of statistical check that is not one of those two. Um, I'm not good at it, but I guess I would be doing perception, I guess. Okay. Trying to keep, uh, keep an eye out. And, well, I don't know. That or stealth, I don't care. I mean, you, you very well could be attempting to try and keep people, you know, in more... Let's go stealth, because that's our nature, too. 
quiet. Yeah, yeah. And I think in like little expeditions like this, it would you know it's interesting to have like a, everybody takes a role and we see how they do on their roles. Yeah, I like it. Um, Good. So I mean, yeah, uh, you all don't f go into any dangerous sorts of terrain. You don't move through any you know animal dens or things of that nature and Taween you do pretty good on uh, navigating toward where you think your destination is to be and this is slightly wooded so I'm giving you a half bonus on, on, on that oh that says for stealth never mind yeah it's, for uh, some reason if you put anything in the stealth notes it pops up for all uh, skill checks yeah the skill notes it goes up on all yeah, there's, there is, it's impossible to do it otherwise. Um, I might just put that somewhere else so it doesn't pop up for every skill check. So, you guys travel for the remainder of your day. A couple of miles in and through. And you begin to see as you round one of the passes smoke rising from over the next ridge. It starts to climb with this somewhat narrow path up into the mountains itself. It looks like whatever this was landed in a more craggy part of the mountains. And uh, as you guys make your way up and toward these flames, it is getting a bit dark, or the light is beginning to fade. It, you've probably got an hour or so until nightfall. I th thought it was closer than that. Hmm? I thought it was closer than that, the way you described it. It was still a, a, a two or three miles out. It was a little deceptive because of mountainous and the height and the trajectory in which it fell. Okay. But the explosion did happen somewhat close. Okay. The gnome says, uh, uh, it's getting a bit dark. Do you guys want to, uh, rest until we rest before we reach our destination? We, we, we all look a bit tired. Hmm. Even though I'm not a big fan of humans that man that we left down there he seems to be okay with elves I do worry about his safety a little bit but only him <laughs> so how long did we travel at this point about four hours it was a little later in the day when this initial encounter with these ruffians happened. You'd already been traveling for some time in the day with the caravan. Okay. I probably wouldn't have made the same recommendation at that point if I would have known it was that late. <coughs> That's okay. It is what it is. Yep. I personally would not want to leave him by himself for the night with that human that we saved. Half elf. But, oh, he was half elf. I. You know what? Same difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you do you want to go back? It was. We might not be as restful the next day, but we could get back to make sure he's safe and be. And rest for a bit longer for tomorrow. I'll leave that one up to you too. I I'm a little worried about uh what what, the, what was the guy's name again? Let me look at I, I can just look at this. Drix. Drix. I'm a little worried about Drix, but I you know what we we did leave him on a path that was already made and whatnot. He should be safe for the most part. Maybe the his hunter friends have come back and are protecting him. I'll leave that choice up to you too. As monk, he looks at as he looks at the monk and then at the little gnome. Yeah the monk just looks at the gnome. 
<laughs> the gnome is not a leader. <laughs> Dude, somebody's gonna have to. <laughs> it's it's getting dark. Monk, and... it was your idea to come up here and look at this. Why? Mm -hmm. I thought you would have a little bit stronger opinion. <laughs> Shakes your head now. Uh, Waste of time. I think the doc the do the the doctor in me tells me we should rest here for now and continue in the morning. Just because it's safer that way for us and him. Considering that if either if any of us gets hurt, it'll be that much tougher in the dark. If you say so. Sounds good to me. We should probably set up a watch. We are now a little bit more off the beaten path so we might be in more trouble than our friend or com travel companion he friend is a strong <laughs> <laughs> oh i think all of you are my friends we traveled long enough and i made sure everyone was healthy when that I've known you for less than a week. I do not consider you friend. <laughs> I like you more than most people, but not friend. Oh, that saddens me. Well, we still need a... Can you make us a fire? <clears throat> yes, I'll, I'll make a fire and also... I'll... We should... Like I said, we should probably make some type of watch for the night. I... I could probably handle most of it, but <clears throat> I would keep... probably need at least a couple hours of rest. I'll keep watch for the first bit. Sounds good. Need it. Does she nods. Does the eye gesture she can keep watch as well. <laughs> good. Alright, so I would... Uh... Uh, Tawin would try to find some, like, suited wood and whatnot and try to start a fire. Yeah, and You're I'll... You're relatively safe, so you can take a 10 for it as well. well I'm gonna lump that in with your, your your survival check earlier. Just, that's kind of in the same category. as yes. nothing of note has happened to differentiate things. Time um, to finally have a character that can make a fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, by all means then, Tim, would you like to describe this glorious occasion for yourself? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Taween being pretty good with survival stuff and being one with nature and being one with the woods for most of his life knows the perfect technique to start a fight. The, the TP log cabin technique. <laughs> <laughs> as he sets up a little, as he puts a little tindling wood, a little pile of tindling stuff. And makes a little like trail of like a little a wick type of thing, and then puts a TP of little sticks around that, and then around that he builds a log cabin out of either even thicker wood, and then <coughs> oh, he would have a he would definitely have in his uh, adventure pack some type of flint and whatnot, mm -hmm. and then start on uh, start hitting it with the uh, against the uh, tindling type of wood and start the fire. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, now, the majority of you probably did stop for some sort of mid-afternoon meal as well. Uh, so you don't need a ration for the day, per se. Um, and considering you guys have set up a three-part watch and two of you are elves, you guys can actually or have the elven aspect of being able to just meditate for sleep. You guys are actually able, as a party, to pull off an eight-hour rest, minimally, and still all get plenty of rest. As you all... Uh, now, what kind of order... Who would take first portion of watch? I would. All right. Because the gnome, the gnome already uh, volunteered for first. Indeed. Uh, so and... 
Tywin feeling like he would be the best suited for like the mid watch, the most latest part of the night would uh, do the mid watch. Okay. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, and because this is our first time doing this as these characters, um, uh, Reginald, during your watch, what sorts of things does he get up to? Is there any particular way in which he takes a watch? Uh, uh, he uh, takes his watch quite uh, beside the fire and keeps it going to make sure, because he knows that warmth is one of the biggest things that you need to mm -hmm. survive mm -hmm. and uh which on that when, note when it does get nighttime here in the mountains it does drop to be pretty chilly and uh when he's near his uh the fire he when he's not actively looking he's uh, create when i do have the gold he creates potions to make sure that he can uh, heal his friend his uh, compatriots but mm -hmm. right now since he doesn't have that he is uh, at, he's doing the doing uh, nothing but keeping watch right now. Mm hmm So you stay pretty alert and vigilant. Yep. Um. As your watch does go through for your first watch, nothing of note does happen. Tawin, how do you handle watches in general? As we set our precedence a little bit here. Tawin would uh, do more of like a soldier type watch. He would be. Uh, he would have his. Sh he would already. He would the whole time. He would have his, or at least for the most part, would have his spear in one hand, his shield in his other, ready for anything. As he kind of does like a, a walk around the little encampment that they made, mm -hmm. keeping a uh, keeping keeping in distance, cl close enough to stay in the warmth, but also kind of making sure that he can. Uh, have like a 360 type of look around making sure nothing gets a jump on them okay um and monk how do you handle watches okay so during their time when they were doing their watch she doesn't lay down doesn't she sits in kind of a uh and in, into the into her monk position not not wherever someone else might be lying down not in the same vicinity even trying off to the side but close enough to still gather some of the warmth if it's needed of the fire uh, during the watch itself she basically just stands in, a, in an area finds an area off to the side a little bit and motionly, motionlessly just scans constantly looking around not a sound hardly any movement if you didn't know she was there, you probably wouldn't see her. Okay. So, over the course of the night, uh, you guys found a suitable little nook up against the base of one of these outcroppings that shielded you from the majority of the winds. No sort of bad weather hails you during the night. Nothing seems to bother you. Morning comes. The fire has died out. And for those of you who had your watches in and through the night, you would have also been accompanied by the faint lights of fires burning out up the mountainside where the crash seems to have been. Um, as smoking debris continues to... This thick black debris continues to uh, rise from over the edge of the, the, the ridge. But morning comes, and the majority of the smoke has cleared, not only from your camp, but up from the ridge as well. And you all find yourselves well rested and recouped from the night's events from the day prior. Just as a quick reminder, since that's our first sleep, you get back all vigor and one wound point if you lost any. Excellent. I lost one vigor for the day. <laughs> you regain that. You are vigorous again. <coughs> All right, and then again, the monk is up. Is up. She was up when as soon as the sun came up. The watch period seemed to be over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She immediately goes into her routine. 
Mm -hmm. e even even here. And again, it's silent. It's quiet. Even her moves, she doesn't step on anything or is careful not to step on anything. Careful not to bump a leaf or a branch. But her, but her movements are fluid and graceful, but fast and sharp at the same time. Now, as another precedent here for our mornings, what would be morning routines for you guys? Um, I mean, Monk has her kind of routine she goes through. Do you have any sort of quote-unquote spell preparation time that you have to go through, Reggie? Uh, yeah, I start prepping my uh, extracts for the days. Okay, so, so you're in a corner mixing and, and yeah. stuff. And making sure my bombs are up and running again. Hmm, okay. What about you, Tawin? So, Any morning rituals? <clears throat> uh, n nothing, like, super special. He'd probably be, like... Uh, would we have grabbed... He'd probably be, like, by the fire still, making sure as he uh, takes the preparations to properly put the fire out and whatnot. Okay. As he does not want to start, like, a forest fire. So you make sure to secure the camp as you're getting ready to leave each morning. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you all come to, to rise. You get done with your little morning preps, and the day awaits you. It's a monk. Oh, uh... Looks at Halloween. Now, are we going to continue up the mountain and see what did this? The monk says yes. We have the full day now. All right. Well, let's do this. So it doesn't. It, what it, is. it doesn't take too long for you guys to find a suitable, uh, while rather steep path to start clambering up the edge of this ridge, uh, up onto what looks to be some sort of overhang that it's happening on. <laughs> And just so you know, so it's stated, when she picks you up, it is with arm fully extended, too. <laughs> <laughs> the gnome is fine with this. Yes, as you help the short little gnome up some of the more hardier of distances <laughs> for the vertically challenged. Um, and as you begin to climb up this ridge, you almost immediately begin to see what looks like shards of this bluish glass that lays scattered throughout, and little bits of metal, shrapnel, from whatever this explosion was. Uh, you see, even in one of the trees, there's just this crystalline shard that is lodged in its side. And they're glowing? No sort of glow to it, no. No? Oh, okay. I go on high alert. My emotions are stealthy and at, at, on alert. Okay. Um, as you come up and you find this little, it looks like there's a series of overhangs with some sort of ledge that kind of goes across for a ways and then it looks like there's a touch of a climb and then it doubles back on itself. Just sort of the way that the mountain has naturally kind of formed over time. Uh, and you can see it's on these, this cascade of these ledges that a lot of this similar metallic and crystalline debris lays scattered. As you get up onto this first ledge, you can see at the far end, uh, just before it turns and bends, uh, where like a large rock has provided for it to kind of slope up to the next ledge, there's a larger patch of this rubble, large crystalline shards, um, a dense cluster of them. I use no. I think to myself, oh, no, what, are are these natural or it might or something else? Then I roll uh, my nature and our mm Hmm. Uh, <coughs> where is nature? <laughs> As you're kind of, you know, moving about, looking at these various crystalline chunks that lay scattered about, kind of strewn in with some sort of, uh, it doesn't look like grayish brush steel sort of metal. It's definitely metal, whatever it is, but it's on the more, 
bluer hue as well. It's it has a, a resemblance to this glass you're seeing. And um, as far as if this is any sort of natural occurrence, almost certainly not, even with an 8. Uh, the way it's scattered about, it's almost certainly debris from whatever happened. Uh, and with the knowledge arcana of that role, you, you do detect, although shattered and hard to make out, you see one or two glyphs on some of these crystalline shards, the, or, or pieces of glyphs. It's definitely something arcane in nature. And as you're getting kind of closer towards this cluster that you're checking out, you can see on the other side of the cluster, there's a body laying face down. Oh, I, uh, I start running towards the body, and I yell, there's somebody here, We, I, I think he, they might be hurt. So, uh, before you sprint directly toward the body, this is, um, well, we'll just, uh, just do this now. To give you a bit of visual. As it slowly loads for me, as my computer hates me right now. <laughs> Come on, roll 20. <laughs> Not there yet. Well, in any case, um, to the left, or to the right, it drops off and down and into cliffside. Okay, roll 20 crashed. Um, and to the left of this, it rises very sharply up into cliffside. And it's on this ledge between the two where there's this large cluster of these sharp and jagged looking oh, okay. crystals no, that seems I'm to... The body is on the other side of. Okay, I'm not sprinting towards it then, it sounds like. I mean, you could, but you would likely be sprinting through these glass shards. Yeah. yeah, yeah so tell, uh, look for a way to try to get through there. I tell uh, there's a there's a body there's somebody who might be hurt over there. I'm gonna try to get over if you guys want to come. And I s carefully make my way through the glass shards towards the body. Okay, go ahead and roll an acrobatics. And and I'll do the same and be trying to help him along as we go. And, okay, additionally roll an acrobatics. Not twenty. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I mean... Where you would might think that it might be a hindrance to be smaller and trying to clamber over these shards, you just hop, 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 and your feet are just perfectly fitted to kind of dance between pockets of the glass. Um, and some of these... Man, Old 20 hates me. Some of these pockets <laughs> are... Or some of these glass shards are like a, num a number of feet in length. They're not small glass shards like a broken windshield. Um, and you easily are able to get over into the body. Sorry, I'm trying to get roll 20 up and working again too. No problem. Hmm. So to describe we... to describe the body. Oh yeah, go ahead. What are you doing? Are you staying on the other Bye. side? Yes, I was. I Come with us. Make, okay. I just wanted to make a statement that Tywin does not give a shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, to describe this body now that the two or uh, what did you roll, monk, on the athletic or acrobat? Okay, nineteen. So, um. And you both safely make it across with no issue. To describe the body as you come up across it, it uh, looks like a man, but shorter and a bit stockier. Uh, Reginald, you very well may have seen one once or twice, 
but this is probably a dwarf. The the monk's seen one before. Seen one he before. is wearing, uh, while a lot of his body seems to have burn marks on them, and some of his clothing is somewhat burned away, it looks like some sort of uniform. It is mostly black in nature, and it just doesn't want to load at all anymore. Uh, it's mostly black in nature, and uh, it's got these leather straps connecting the pieces together across it. And it's like a full suit. Hmm. I, uh... How safe are we right now? I mean, you're past the, the majority of the debris. It's not really difficult. Uh, you're not really in fear of cutting yourself here next to the body. There's just getting to him. That, that was a bit of a danger. And is there a chance of failure if I, do a nat if I uh, take a 20? No, not necessarily. I mean, other than the time aspect. I, uh, so I'm going to... I, I, I'm going to make sure this person's all right real quick. Uh, can you make sure nothing comes by? I, uh, speak, I speak to the monk. She shakes her head yes and keeps, starts keeping an eye out. So I take, a, I take the 20 and start uh, going with my heel check. Go to uh, see what's wrong with them. Yeah. Uh, you, roll the, you roll the dwarf over. And you check his breath, you check his pulse. He's definitely alive, but barely. You can see he has lost a severe amount of blood, and it's, it's amazing he even survived the fall. He is oh, yeah. almost certainly on the edges of death. In my professional opinion, is there what is the best way to uh, stabilize him? Uh, he well, with your role, with your high roll, he's already likely stabilized himself per se, um, which is why he's probably still alive in the condition he is. Okay, and I uh, I try to. How fresh do these wounds look? Would a uh, would treating would treating them right now be any point? It would require the, the amount of time it takes to do such things, but they're pretty dire. I mean, he's got a number of these glass shards straight impaled mm -hmm. into parts of him. It looks like he has a number of broken bones from the fall. Um, no, but how uh, for treat deadly wounds? I was wondering if they were as fre or, like, fresh, fresh. Uh, they happened the They happened during the event of yesterday, it seems. So I cannot do treat deadly wounds. Yeah, so more than a day, so. Yep. Is, 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 does he look unconscious? Oh, yes. And Monk's look at, at, at you and just kind of motions like, can you open his eyes? I, uh, I, I check his, I check his, uh, I tried to wake him up. It's like, uh, see if, uh, see if he's, he can be conscious. It's like, I shake him a bit. Uh, con considering his his wounds and his current state, he he's likely out for a while until he is able to recover. Uh, uh, can we separate him from the wreckage, or is he not? He's not like impaled on the wreckage, is he? No, no, no. So there was the path, a bit of wreckage, and then behind that, him. I do first aid on him to make sure that all the. Uh... To get rid of any debris, any debris that's inside him right now. Yes, yeah, so you start to remove the glass shards. Yep. I can't even get Chrome to work now. 
Weird. It but, hates uh, you. <laughs> my computer hates me right now. And I uh, say, we might need your help to carry this man out. I yell over. Uh, well, how, how heavy does he look? Uh, he's pretty, know, he's short, you're, but you're he's stocky. Stock. You're handicapped right now. Because <laughs> you're... You could probably lift him. Okay. Um, before, uh, if I, do I see the monk trying to lift him? Yeah, if if it looks like he needs to be moved, well, I'll uh, she'll look at you and say, you know, at uh, mid-gesture, you want me to lift him? Points he, at herself and lift him. To make sure he doesn't get any more hurt than he already is, uh, two people would be the best. Just so that he he is not as jarred when we move him. Okay. So she motions to Dawin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, I'm coming. Make me go through these crystal... <laughs> and, and, and while we're standing there, look around just to see what else we see, if there's anything of no... Um, being near... I mean, there's the rise that seems to lead up onto the next ledge, uh, ledge but you can definitely see more wreckage up and over the ledge. It seems the bulk of the ship, or whatever it was, probably crashed up and over. I don't know if you need it, but I'll give you a uh, acrobatics. Hey, you rolled a 15. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to tell me your rolls until I can... Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Get this bloody <laughs> browser working again. Yeah, so I rolled a 15. Uh. Um, for your for your reflex, yes. So you you easily make it over the shards without any incident. Now, I don't picture me ever seeing a dwarf before, or I mean, Tywin has ever seen a dwarf before. Probably not. So. <clears throat> He kind of just looks at the dwarf and be like, what is this, some type of small human? No, it's a, it's I a shake dwarf, my, I, I shake believe. My head now. What is a dwarf? She points. <laughs> the monk, te- monk is right, that <laughs> is a dwarf. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Let's, what are we doing? Uh, I think we should get him somewhere safer. Uh, All right. And then I, Tywin would help uh, move the dwarf. I know. I just don't. I don't have the the hardware to run all of these all of these programs at the same time. Yeah, no. Well, we can work on other ways of doing it because you're trying to do all of it yourself on your system. We might come up with a way where we can share the load of the process. Uh, yeah, we can deal with that later. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna have to. I think. Do that either. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so the three of you are on that side. You pick up the body and you are attempting to cross it back over. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Or if there's no other way around. Unless, it's yeah, the only it's way. cliff above you and cliff below you. You could clamber up and get onto the next ledge with him without having to go over the crystalline rubble, but. Going back um, down with him at this current moment, you don't see an immediate <coughs> path. Right. So we'll take the path that appears to be the only viable path. And between the group of you, you're easily able to lift him and get him up onto the next ledge where he at least is a bit more safe. I I think he might know what that explosion was. 
but from what I've seen from the the shards so far, I saw glyphs on them. So I'm not really sure what to do right now. I'm I'm a doctor, I'm not really a magician or a wizard. Magic can't be trusted. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. There are some magics that can help heal people. Can make sure that diseases don't affect friends and family. Most magic, though, usually hurts or takes the life of an, or the user itself. I'd rather just leave this and go back to our caravan friends. Friend, I mean. As you did, go ahead. as you are having this conversation, you can see now that you've kind of made it up to this next ledge safely, there are a number of other bodies. There are probably three or four of them that have landed up on this ledge with more debris. However, these ones are very clearly dead. One's like entirely impaled on the debris, just hanging from it. Um, another looks like half of his body has been blasted away. And then there's another. the ledge continues to go up as well, where you see more debris. And again, nothing of note or nothing of substance or value or anything that, that we see there. Or something that we would think, something that we recognize besides shards and dead dwarves. Not at least on these first couple of ledges. And y you have not seen anything of substance. Okay. But All you can right. definitely if... tell the wreckage. Probably the most of it hit a bit further up. And this just the trickling debris of it that you're catching party to. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind a bit of selfishness from me, could we keep going up? There might be more people that might need help up there if, if at least this one dwarf was able to survive. This would make uh, sense. Among the map, odds, but... in agreement. <laughs> no... All right, let's let's keep on moving on then. Uh, we should put this dwarf somewhere. This dwarf seems pretty safe here for now. Let's keep going up. Hope, hopefully, there are more survivors. Maybe we'll learn something from them. I have a feeling there won't be, but so we set him somewhere soft and gentle, somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. Don't be like that. You should always hope for the best. In cases like this, the best never happens. You never know. You you never know. Okay. Mm. And so. how hard is it to keep going up? Uh, it's not extremely difficult or anything. With just a small amount of time, you're able to clamber up to the next ledge. Uh, where on this landing you see a very large chunk of debris and in this wreckage you see not only these crystalline shards and these metal like bars and beams but also elements of wood um, uh, there's to one side on the left this very large mound maybe 10 feet high or so that is kind of pressed up against the edge of the next landing. And then off to the right, a bit further down, there's this strange looking form. There's. It looks like some sort of shell of metal, and it looks broken and jagged on one side. Uh, and you can see these green fumes kind of in a cloud around it. And within the cloud, there is this body laying face down and what looks to be a sack of some sort. And you can already see, 
even from a distance. There's a number of these red chips, probably red astron, um, scattered about the mouth of the, the bag that is spilled. I, uh, I don my my uh, doctor's mask. <laughs> hey, it gives me a, it gives me plus one circumstances to gaseous Indeed. Um, toxins. That's a good thing. Uh, this this is a strange place. Do you, either of you know? Can any of you make out what's why what happened here? Um, I don't. Again, the, the the monk looks at you and shakes her head. No, she's indicating she has never seen anything like this before. She's seen gnomes before, but not like not like this. You Sorry, are... uh, not gnomes, but dwarves before. But not like this. That first dwarf is the first one I've ever met. So, no, I've n never seen anything like this before. I, uh, I, I slowly approach the, the gaseous area. Uh, do I feel any abnormal effects against me? 